This is Anthony Marquez, better known as Kung Lao for Mortal Kombat. Make sure to like and subscribe to Nerd Cage Live. Be there. Us. If you want to know what was it like seeing that j massive Goro puppet and all, like, please tell us how, how was that fighting that thing? How did it all go down? It, you know what? And, and the weird part is that it was a robot. Mm -hmm. So Goro was a robot, like the top part of Goro, from the head to the first arms, he was a robot. The second arms and stuff was a stunt guy. So oh, what wow. they did was they had a crane and they lowered the huge part of Goro on top of the stunt guy. And then it's amazing, on the side, they had, it was almost like, the, uh, uh, like watching Sesame Street with the puppet, everything was computerized where they had this keyboard where the guy could click these buttons and the, the thing, eyes would move, the mouth, you know what I mean? Everything, it's like, it was just fascinating. I was like, oh my God, it was like, it was all run by a computer on the side where the guy, you know, hit this and eyes could blink, the arms and everything that moved it, the, give the facial expression. So it was like, wow, it was like fascinating. It was fascinating to see this huge monster. And I was like, I mean, I can, I could jump fairly high, but it was no way in hell I could jump up and kick him in the head. <laughs> no, that's know? what yeah, I want to talk was, about was, real quick. You landed yeah, how, a flying how hard jump was kick. It to like, how did the coordination uh, go? Like, did they, like, how, when you landed that kick and some of the, 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 the hits they landed, like, how did it all go down? Like, how did the coordination go down? It was all, it, it was, they were choreographed. You know, they were choreographed. You're going to do this, you're going to do this. And of course, like some of the stuff I added myself, like when you see me uh, just, when I introduce my kind of my character, when I see him walking in the ring, and you see before he walked in the ring, I jump into the splits. That was all yeah. Ken. That was, that was me taking the form of Art Ling, like I'm the Joe Bad. So I had, in my mind, my character was like, I'm the best of the best in here. And so, and when I read the script, I was like to myself, I mean, you had, Shane Chong, you had all these phenomenal characters that were the stars of it. But when I created the character, I was like, my character has to be the best of the best fighters there. Why? Because he's fighting a monster when everybody else is fighting a human. And so that's how when I was developing the character, I had to think like, then for you to be able to, that means in my mind when I created the character, it's like, you've eliminated all the humans in competition. So you're so bad to the bone that now you get to fight the prince of, of the underworld. Goro, you know what I mean? So that's how I created the character. So I had you know, certain things like, okay, let me do this. Let me show kind of a little bit. And I believe it or not, I, I, I added a lot more of Arlene, but of course, as you know, in filming, when they start to edit, you know, but it was good, it was good. Now, how much background did they actually give you on the character of Goro? Did, did they mention that he won that tournament nine times before you even fought him? <laughs> You know what? No, no, not at all. I think they got it more into maybe the second Mortal Kombat, the other ones, they got more into it. But at that time, it really didn't. It was just, you just knew you were fighting this, you know, this prince of the, the underworld, this Goro character. Gotcha. You know, and it was like, it was like, it was amazing because, you know, yeah, they didn't give too much background on it. And later on, when the other, uh, 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 Mortal Kombat movies came out then, you hear about like, oh, I never knew that, I never heard that. You know, I think it's like when you're creating something, then you kind of expand like, well, hey, let us go back on some background so people can know, you know, yeah. more about this character. Yeah, I was gonna say like, you, you've got to know more about the the games and stuff now. It's like, how, what is it like to know like, wait a minute, that's what I was going up against? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, I you know, it's 2020 now. <laughs> And I'll tell you that, 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 that thing that has always been a blessing and, and is that I have kids that I'm teaching. Hell, the movie was shot in the 90s, but I have kids that go, I know you, you were from Mortal Kombat, because the Mortal Kombat, everyone follows that. I mean, from whether you're four years old or 84 years old, it's just, and to sit there and run into kids, I'm like, I shot that movie back in the 90s, early 90s, and kids that are seven years old are looking at me going, you were Art Lean, you fought the foreign monster. I was like, wow. So it just showed the impact of how powerful this movie, who knows, maybe even when they first shot the, the first uh, movie of Mortal Kombat, they, you know, think about it, they may have not known that it was going to turn into a cult type following where it just, boom, it's just off the rails. Yeah, it really blew up. So I'm dying to know, I'm dying to know. Um, Sifu Edwards, 
when you got the part of Art Lean, did they give you any production notes or any any specifics on the character, anything that maybe didn't actually show up on screen, but things that you had to know in order to play him? Not really, because what, what happens as an actor, when you're fortunate enough and blessed to actually get cast in a role, get hired, you're the cook in the kitchen. You're the one that's getting ready to create this recipe, making some gumbo or some jambalaya and you're stirring, let me add this. You have to do your background search. And, and, and that was one of the things that I learned at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. When you get a character, you start to do background search on your own character, like where did he come from? What was his upbringing like? So you start to create this character. So by the time you get on the set, you have a character. And it's up to the director who may tweak it some. They go, okay, pull back on this. But you got to come out with a character. If not, hell, you won't have a job. Because if he's got to create your character on the set, you're done. So as, a, as, as an artist, you create your character on the best on how you, just from reading the script and doing your background search, you're creating this character. So by the time you walk on the set, you're Art Lane. You're no longer Ken Evans. You've taken over. When you put on that the gray jacket, I think it was a gray jacket I was wearing, a karate gi, I think. You know what I mean? When you you still on, have the, the the wardrobe or any props from the movie? No. Okay, figured I'd ask. No. Uh, you know what? I take it back. I the cops that that I have it somewhere, but it's tucked away in some footlocker in storage. <laughs> the actual. Yeah, I do have that because before I left, they, they gave me that. I have the full uh uh uh, uh the karate gi and the pants and everything. I have that. Oh, that would be and, dope. But when I got it, I didn't want to lose it so i put it away in a safe place but the place is so safe it's in storage that i would have to climb over you know how storage how you oh yeah before you know what you're <laughs> like okay which box is, is it in you know what i mean you, so it's like so i have it but it's somewhere in storage in some box that i would have to get a whole team of people and say okay for the next two weeks we're going to open every box and we're going to pull it out and try to find it the uniform okay i see a good question in the chat joe but before i take that question i do have a very specific question sifu edwards Yes. I was just, I'm just fascinated to know the scene where you died and Goro picked up your body and then Shang Tsung stole your soul. How did that happen? What did they do? Did they, how did they prop you on top of Goro? How did that all go down? Actually, through my years of Kung Fu training, I levitated. There you go. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm joking, Jason. <laughs> no, actually, what they did was, believe it or not, it was a screen, a, 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 a crane. It was a rope. They had a cable. The same cable they lowered the body on top of the stunt guy, they used that and it used a blue screen. So it was a blue screen and then they ran a cord through behind with it and I had the belt on and they just pulled me up. A crane actually lifted me up. So you don't even see the wire, the wire is so thin. That's what lifted oh. me up. Wow. Was yeah. it uncomfortable? No, not at all, not at all. Because you know, the, the harness belt they have, you don't even feel it, you just, you know, you know, only thing you're praying is like, I hope this thing don't break down and I'm hanging up here for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> And then, oh, and then oh, when Shang Tsung stole your soul, and then the soul goes into his eyes. So how do they, how do they screen you? Like how do they use that effect to, to for, for your oh, soul? Oh, that one they use a blue screen, but they basically had me to like lay down and just you know like imagine that your soul's leaving, and you go through the, the whole motion like imagine that your soul is leaving your body into the afterlife, and so on a blue screen, and then they just take that and they can do anything with the blue screen. With the blue screen. You could put a, a a building behind me like I'm in New York City. I put a, the ocean behind me like I'm in Florida. You know what I mean? With the blue screen, they can just put anything there. And so that's basically you what happens. It well. You see me going like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Thank you for sharing that with us. You sold that well. And my God, I was like I said, it was always so cool how that was executed.